Endotherm have been very, very clever with this product. It's ever so simple to install. It's very, very simple to use. You put it in and you leave it and the savings are massive. So we're going to talk about putting it in. I've already taken the top off, so I'll put that out of the way for a moment. Um, we have a normal single panel radiator here. Um, there are two types of central heating essentially. One is a conventional central heating system where the water from the uh, boiler is heated and passed through the radiators and that water is topped up through something called a header tank in your loft. You, you possibly have a big water tank and a smaller header tank as you can see from the insert. That water constantly feeds the central heating system and that the boiler pumps that round or the central heating pumps pump that round your system. The second is on a combination boiler which heats the water on demand and the boiler pumps the water round the system. With either system, with a conventional system, one would normally um, drain the central heating system down um, by fitting a hose pipe um, which you'll see to the drain plug at the lock shield end of the system um, and you would drain the system down put your um, put the uh, endotherm into your header tank and that would flush it around the system but we're going to show you a way today that will allow you to do that whether you've got a conventional system or a, a combination system and we're simply going to empty some water out of the radiator so that we can put some endotherm in the actual radiator or if you have a towel rail that might be easier for you um, and that's a dead easy way of getting it in. So the very first thing to do is to make absolutely sure your boiler is turned off. That's important. So once the boiler's turned off, we'll make sure all of our valves are shut. If you are in any doubt about closing the valves and how these valve works, how the valves work, please look at our videos on YouTube and on DIY Doctor about how radiator valves work. Sometimes uh, the thermostatic valve here has a frost setting. It doesn't detect the temperature of the radiator water, it detects the temperature of the room. So if your room is calling for more heat, this valve can open and if your radiator is off, flooding can occur. So please double check. If you're unsure, please go and see our videos. So the first thing to do is to make sure that these are off and this particular rad do this valve does go down to zero, so I know that that's off. Tighten the lock shield valve cap right up, and once we've um, set everything, so we know that no more radiator water can get into this radiator. So now is the time to, to let some out. So we're going to put um, a, a, a paint tray, a drip tray, underneath this valve, and we're going to let enough water out to make sure that, that that's lifting that up a little bit too high the cloth it's always a good idea to have a couple of cloths handy um, so we've got a we've got a, a paint tray underneath the radiator valve what i'm going to do now is i'm going to loosen the nut on the radiator valve that's when i'm going to use that those footprints there to hold the valve steady with a cloth on it so I don't damage the valve. I'm going to put any, any marks on it. So I'm going to open that valve. You can see the water start to drip out. Okay, so we're just going to let a little bit of water out. We can see that coming out there. The valve's the everything's turned off, so the water is running into the into the drip tray. You can use a little cup or whatever. Now, what we need to do is to empty enough from the radiator to make absolutely sure that we can get the bottle of endotherm in. And what I'll do there is I'll just close that up again for a second. And to make it run a little bit faster, we can open the bleed valve on the end of the radiator. Just with a little radiator bleed key, I'm, I'm holding that so that the camera can see, get a close up on that. Just undo that to let a little bit of air into the system and that should make that run a little bit faster. Now you don't want to watch, sit here waiting for, for 5 or 10 minutes for me to empty this, so we're going to fade in, fade out rather, and fade in again when I've got a, a, a paint tray full of water. 
or half full, which is about the same as the bottle of endotherm, and then I'll show you how we put the endotherm in. Okay, so we, we have about the contents of a bottle of endotherm in the drip tray. So we'll reverse the procedure here. We'll tighten up the radiator valve nut, holding that in place. There we go. Okay, we'll move our drip tray very carefully out of the way, spilling a little bit of water, which is why it's always a good idea to have a cloth underneath. But there we go. Okay, so we've got no more water there. Now we're going to go back up to our, our bleed valve and lest we forget, we're going to tighten that up now so that we know that that's tight. And then we're actually going to undo the cap that holds the, the bleed nut. So we're going to take the radiator cap out completely. And endotherm have been very clever here because as a, when a plumber came comes on to site to do this, he would have something like this that he's made up himself, a compression coupling with the nut missing, a 90 degree bend leading to a compression funnel. He would then fit the compression fitting into the end of the radiator. I won't do that all the way. Hold the funnel up and tip the endotherm into the radiator like that. Endotherm realise of course that this isn't this apparatus isn't something that everybody's got indoors. So they've manufactured for you this little device. This is just a little coupling which represents the compression coupling that you just saw with a nozzle on the end of it that fits into the piece of hose that they send and the cap that fits onto the top of the bottle. So we will first of all we'll take that bottle cap off and we'll screw in the coupling. I'm trying to do this so that my fingers are out of the way and you can see what's happening. Using the spanner again. Tighten that up. goes a good way in. So having tightened the um, nut into the radiator, we then get our endotherm and replace the, the cap, uh, the endotherm cap with the filler cap and simply push the hose down, push that well into there and tip that straight into the radiator. Um, it couldn't get any simpler than that. It's going to take about 90 seconds for that to go in. Then, of course, we remove the nozzle, replace the radiator cap, tighten up the bleed key if we've left that open, and everything's great. We have then got um, a very simple way of reducing our heating bills by 15%.